What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I bring Gius and Matthews break down all the original content you watch on the WWE Network, on Peacock, and on Vice TV. As today we're talking Season 1, Episode 6 of Tales from the Territories, Polynesian Pro Wrestling's Island Dynasty. All about Polynesian Pro Wrestling, the Samoan Dynasty. Honestly, a lot of what I heard here was very interesting. Um, it started off a little slow, didn't have a lot of familiar, notable faces on this episode. A lot like last week that had fucking Bret Hart on it. Um, this one had Rocky um, Ayakia. I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Um, they, they pronounced it on this episode, and I already forgot because I watched it a couple hours ago. Kevin Sullivan was also on the panel. Bra uh, Bruno Lauer, who was uh, you know downtown Bruno in WWE, of course. And Lars Anderson as well, who was the uh, kind of the right-hand man to um, Liam Ivea, who was the wife of Peter Maivia, and started the whole Polynesian... I mean, she didn't start it, her husband did, but... You know, she took it over, ruled it with an iron fist. They made it as successful as it was for many, many years. But um, I thought it was an interesting episode. Decent roundtable here. All of them had a cool story to contribute, cool story to share, stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I just wasn't really sure what to expect from this episode. I don't really know a lot about the Polynesian pro wrestling scene. That being said, though, what I was going to say a moment ago was that some of the stories that I heard here on the episode were very familiar because they were also featured on Young Rock. Young Rock has a lot to do with... Liam Iavia, and the show is great, by the way. I've followed every episode of Young Rock. It's very entertaining, very good. Um, pretty much true to life as far as, you know, accurate information. Rock's in charge of the show. So I would be surprised if he wasn't nailing all that sort of stuff, having to do with his family and whatever. Um, but a lot of the stories they share here in, like, the second half of the episode having to do with Leah and the Johnson family were already featured on Young Rock, so it was cool hearing them from a different perspective. Um, but yeah, it was called Polynesian Pacific Pro Wrestling. Hawaii's, you know, they talked about Hawaii being a strategic location for the promotion. And it was typically a stop before wrestlers would go to Japan. Uh, so it was a hot spot in that respect. A lot of people went through that territory. Dusty Rhodes, Iron Sheik, Andre the Giant, Ric Flair, all wrestled there at one point or another. Uh, Rocky Johnson, of course, or Rocky, not, not Rocky Johnson, who we'll get to in a moment. There was a different Rocky, like I said earlier, Rocky um, Ayakia. I'm probably definitely mispronouncing that, but he was the son of King Curtis Ayakia, and uh, King Curtis was one of the bigger stars in that promotion. He really liked it bloody. He was a bloody professional wrestler. Uh, High Chief Peter Maivia, that being The Rock's grandfather, uh, founded the promotion with his wife Leah, and uh, they tell the story of how Peter got into it one time with Billy Robinson. And I guess they were, like, eating or something, and then Billy made a comment about how Peter was eating or whatever, and he fucking pulled Billy's eye out. And, I mean, it was either it was either Peter or King Curtis. I'm pretty sure it was King Curtis, but I forgot exactly who it was. But it was a pretty gruesome story. Meanwhile, King Curtis uh, cuts a promo one time about how everyone should be dressing like men around the islands instead of wearing, like, the, uh, you know, what they wear in, in Hawaii and, and, you know, that, that, part of the, uh, that part of the island and whatever. And he pissed off fans when he said that, making fun of their culture and their attire and stuff like that. He had a match with a man called uh, Nef Mavaya. I don't think this wasn't a Maya Via. It was spelled a bit differently. M-A-I-A-V-A. -A -A. Uh, Nef ended up getting fans bloody in the front row because he bashed his head on like the turnbuckle when um, when King Curtis moved. Blood went all over the fans. Pretty gross. Starts foaming from the mouth. And Peter was supposed to make the, the make the save when the bell rang. The thing was, was that the fans were so rabid, they pushed like the barricades forward. The bell got lost, so they couldn't ring the ring bell. And the bell never rang, and the wrestlers never made the save. Ultimately, he got the bell, the, the, the uh, timekeeper, bellkeeper, whatever, found the bell, rang it. All the baby faces make the save. And it was really just out of control. Uh, one of the fans threw concrete and hit a cop on the head. Didn't kill him, thankfully, but... You know, still a pretty scary situation. Peter had to grab the mic, calm the fans down. Peter ended up dying from cancer, they said, at 45 in 1982. So Leah automatically just became the new head of the company. And in doing so, became the first major female wrestling promoter in the history of the industry. And Lars Anderson, who I mentioned before, was her right-hand man. Uh, they, he talks about how revered she was. Everyone talks about how revered she was in that role. Um, Sullivan had to, in a promo, call the Samoans coconuts. You know, I guess just making fun of them or whatever. And they were fucking pissed at him. So before one of his matches with uh, Siva Afi, he was told... And again, I'm mispronouncing all of these names. I probably should have recorded this after I watched the episode so I could get the pronunciation better. 
But anyway, so Aaliyah told Sullivan, you're going to win the championship. And he was scared for his life going out there. He could tell how rabid these Samoan fans were. And a majority of the audience, 99% of them were Samoans, bigger guys that could fucking kill him, he feared. So he was really worried going out there. And he was supposed to have backup in the form of a bunch of Samoans, but they were drinking beforehand with the locals, so they didn't go out with them. And he was even more scared. During the course, even before the match started, I was going to say during the course of the match, before the match even started, he knew this was not going to end well if he won the championship. He was afraid he wouldn't make it out alive. So he pulled an, he called an audible, pulled his opponent over him, and had him beat him to lose the match and therefore not win the championship. The uh, <laughs> the uh, you know opposite of the Montreal screw job. It was a screw job, but not in the way that you would that you would expect. And he ended up going to the back. People were confused. Did not get beat up or whatever, but he said that was the most scared he had ever been. Leah wanted him to go back out there and say, hey, you know, I, I booked you to win the match, blah, blah, blah. He's like, listen, I'll, I'll do it another day. I can't go out there now and do it. Those people are going to rip me apart. It will not end well. So they talk about putting on Hawaii's biggest show, drawing 22,000 people for a show I believe was called Hot Summer Night. Andre was on the card, and there was a lot of representation from other promotions in the States, from the States, because everyone wanted it in with Leah. And Crockett did not want any of his matches, any of his guys, or the matches with his guys in them, filmed. So therefore, like the Siva Afi match against Ric Flair was not filmed, and that footage I just obviously doesn't exist because it wasn't filmed. Um, Leah knew that people were trying to steal her territory. And Sullivan tells the story, and he had previously wrestled for the AWA, among other promotions, um, he shares this story about an issue that he had with an employee and a stockholder. And they thought that they could do his job better than him. So they started attacking him, blindsided him, and they nearly killed him. They actually tried to drown him before the police showed up. And he had to sit across from said stockholder in later meetings. How these people weren't arrested, I don't know. But maybe because he didn't see them or there was no evidence of it. I don't, I'm not sure why. There was no legal ram- ramifications there. But pretty fucking crazy. On that same note, commentator Dunbar um, Wakayama, I believe is how you pronounce his name, this story that this story they covered on Young Rock, I believe. Uh, he was trying to start his own promotion, steal the talent, didn't know they had to pay to use the talent, and he threatened to sue them, and then he gets threatened and goes to the FBI. Someone actually told him, probably one of the Samoan, not fans, but someone involved with... Uh, with Leah, because again, she did not, <laughs> she could play dirty, she did not give a fuck, someone threatened Dunbar, uh, Dunbar, that they would cut off his nuts and put him in his mouth, so he went to the FBI with that, and then met with Leah and uh, Lars Anderson for a meeting that he wore a wire for, they offered him money, or they, you know, not offered him money, they demanded money from him, like $5,000, I believe, cops catch them, they go to jail, did 13 weeks of trial, Gordon Soley was involved because Florida was trying to get it in with Hawaii at that point, so he was involved in the trial in some form or fashion. Bob Geigel, who was the president at that point of the NWA, had to explain to the jury what a booking fee was. And because of that, I mean, it's not normal elsewhere, but it is in wrestling, at least at that point. So it was because I guess Dunbar was, you know, accusing them of extortion for the talent. Um, so they were found innocent ultimately. And even though they were found not guilty, she was still deported back to Samoa. And again, this is all covered on Young Rock, so this wasn't really exactly news to me. But she was deported back to Samoa. So it was kind of like their way of saying, hey, we lost, but we'll punish you in another way. Uh, they talk about King Curtis, rented out how he rented out Beach Necessities. His son tells the story, of course, here on this episode, and how it angered hotels, and the police gave him tickets every day. And they didn't want to kick him off, but they knew they had to do something because he wasn't going anywhere. The police came one day to take his stuff, and he played wrestler by taking a bump on a box of fins, opening him up, opening himself up hard way, and he brought a cameraman to film it all. So he was trying to make the police look bad by doing this. Obviously, he was completely in the wrong here, but he was trying to, to find his way out of it. Uh, the news cameraman got the footage that aired at the news on the news that night, kind of painting the whole thing out to be, uh, you know, favoring King Curtis. And he ended up getting to keep the beach or keep his shit on the beach. And he did that and he stayed on that part of the beach until the day that he died, I guess, which is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, on, on the news that night, they showed the footage of him on the stretcher. So it gained a lot of sympathy for King Curtis. And the police just let him go after that and let him stay there until he died, which is pretty wild. 
Uh, from there, they talk about how Rocky Johnson and Bruno were friends in Kansas City. Uh, Rocky brought Bruno with him to Hawaii. And then Rocky was moving to Memphis as part of just being on the road or whatever. And again, they, they tell the story, and this is covered a lot in the second season of Young Rock. Uh, Rocky wanted Bruno to live with Dewey, his son, that being Dwayne Johnson, uh, The Rock, of course, while he was out doing shows and whatever. So they tell the story of Dewey getting sold a car for, I think they were like a bunch of like hobos, uh, a bunch of homeless people were offering Dewey a car for $400. And uh, Bruno said that all that he had on him was 40 bucks. They took the 40 bucks, sold him the damn car. There was a hobo sleeping in the back of the car, had to kick him out. This was covered in the first episode of um, of Young Rock. And then after that, uh, the car, they brought it back. It was a complete piece of shit. They showed Rocky. He was like, why would you buy that thing? And never started again after that. It was a complete piece of crap. Um, but yeah, he talks about how he's still in awe of Rocky's success to this day. That being, you know, uh, the rock, which was pretty cool. Uh, from there, the, you know, promotion kind of died out. Um, Leah moving or being deported back to Samoa didn't obviously not help matters. Hot Summer Night 2, the following year, drew 1,900 people, which was a far cry from the 22,000 they did uh, the year prior. So they discussed the legacy of the promotion and how Rock has uh, since put the Polynesian Pro Pacific shirt that um, Bruno sent him and found in like the back of his closet or something after 30 or something years, sent it to Rock as Rock always wanted one of those shirts. And then Rock sent a picture, a selfie of himself with the shirt on his wall in his house to Bruno, which is pretty fucking cool. Uh, so this was a good episode. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect going in um, since they didn't have the most star-studded cast here. But the stories were kind of equally divided amongst everyone, which was great. Some really fun stories, familiar stuff. If you've seen Young Rock, some of these stuff, some of these stories will sound familiar, but in a good way. And it was another fun episode, just hearing people share some stories and, uh, you know, recount history and stuff like that. So, good stuff here. We got two episodes left, uh, I think, next week and the week after. Next week's episode is about the promotion that Piper kind of came up in. So, we're going to hear a lot of Piper talk in next week's episode. That should be entertaining. If you want to check out my other reviews of Tales from the Territories, they're right here on the channel in the description box down below. Check out the playlist of all my interviews, not interviews, the reviews of the show so far. Be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video. And be sure to subscribe for more daily content. Have a great one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.